Wonderful to be with all of you. In the last 50 years of my life, trying to understand ecology, it means the science of how our home, the oikos, the living earth works. It's about the relationships of every part of the earth. So ecology means A, our home, our common home, this earth. It means relationships that maintain this earth has a livable system, which is why you're having a climate camp. And ecology also means it is the overarching economy, because the economy of life is the higher economy. The economy of money and the market is a subsidiary which should be following the laws of ecology. And it's because it's gone rogue, we have all the multiple crises we see. Economy has lost its way. We have to bring it home. Okay, and then I'd like to ask the same question to Hilan. Thanks. I am also think, uh, thank you so much for having me on this panel with these amazing activists. I'm really happy to be here. Um, so ecology to me means, as Vandana said, because I've read about what ecology means to you, um, but I think that um, what needs to be interrogated is these relationships, the relationships between all beings, I think is something that, when I think about it, I think about it as an example of how something beautiful has been colonized and how we can decolonize it. And decolonizing um, the ecosystem is something that, that we really need to talk about. And I, I've, I'm from South Africa, I work in Mozambique and so I just want to give you two examples of how I I see the ecosystem as having been colonized in South Africa where the majority of the population was rural living off the land being self-sustaining um, the when the apartheid government came in it tried to rip apart this relationship which it did it moved people it moved men into the cities to work to live in hostels to work in the mining companies it decided what people would put in their bodies it gave these men lots of sugar and made maize meal very cheap so that people could live off carbs we now have a massive obesity problem in south africa in mozambique we look at the fossil fuel corporations and my specific focus is gas, and a lot of it is in the north in Cabo Delgado. Um, and here you've got that, you know, the textbook situation of, of fossil fuels and what, what, it, it, what it leaves behind. And so thousands of people being displaced, and these are fishing and farming communities. They've for generations lived off the land and off the sea and off the entire ecosystem. And now the way that these companies, once they've picked them off their land, they think it's okay to give them another piece of land or give them access to another piece of the sea. And this is not how it works. Land is not just a block. It's not just an amount of property that you can measure in a hectare. These people are so connected to this land for so long that they're not just, this industry is not just forcing people into physical poverty, but into spiritual poverty. And I think the ways that we can decolonize this, one of them would be um, re with re renewables, Course, but it's got to be people deciding how they use their ecosystem, how they use the resources that are available to them um, for their benefits. So in Mozambique, where solar is, the, the solar resources are massive, the hydro resources, the people should, the investment should be into small scale locally owned power production. Um, People should not be told, it should not be prescribed to people how they live their lives and how they benefit from, from the ecosystem. And this, this power is something that decolonization is about giving people back their power and um, debts need to be canceled. And for this renewable energy, the, what it also means is that people need to be given the tools needed, the technology, no patents and also the knowledge within which to do this themselves. So um, when I think of ecology, I think of a lot which I just <laughs> told you. So yeah, thanks.
Okay, hello. I'm also very happy to be amongst you all. I've been here since yesterday, and I am amazed at the, the interest and the effort to lend meaning and joy to life. And I join you in doing that. And I'm from the Kurdish Freedom Movement, as Anna mentioned. Now, we, see, we do not see the human society or the humans outside of what we describe as ecology. So maybe what capitalist system is trying to enforce on us is a very isolated case of the relationships that do not include the human relations. So we do, we do not look from a biologist uh, approach or a very human-centered approach, but we do see that ecology is actually the science of all these relationships, including the human society um, uh, as well. So therefore, um, this evolutionary, the links in evolution that actually produced the human and its society is now both at risk, leading to, in fact, the risk of a society side that Öcalan talks about a lot. So it's not just the environment at risk, it's what we know as human society is also at risk. Because the last 5,000 years, of patriarchy and the 200 years of capitalist system is destroying these evolutionary links. And us as a society, the way we exist is also being torn apart. So there is no longer a moral and political society, which means that we cannot make our own laws and that we cannot make our own decisions, political decisions. Therefore, we are losing this touch with our environment. And at the end, we are forced to be more individualistic. I always give the example, like in Germany, the Greens are telling people to shower less, to wear more clothes in winter, you know, and to make less carbon prints of their own as individuals, while we have a rampant militarism running around and a destruction of our um, first nature, which is the nature, and as well as our own societies. So maybe later I will go into this colonialism, and the decolonialism that Abdullah Hocalan and the Kurdish Freedom Movement are discussing. This colonialism stretches back to the Sumerian times. Um, it's the colonialism that began with women's colo co colonization of the women, but more of that later, I guess. Sí, eh, es un gusto estar con todas y todos y todos aquí reunidos. Eh, me hace bien interesante pensar en esa palabra, ya que en las comunidades indígenas de México hay un término eh, social organizativo que se llama bienes comunales, ¿no? y habla del de sentido de todos los bienes que son colectivos, que son no solamente la tierra que da de comer, sino el territorio que se construye sobre la tierra, ¿no? la identidad, las costumbres, las tradiciones. Eh, entonces, este territorio pues es parte ancestral ¿no? de un legado de pueblos que han existido y han colaborado entre sí durante mucho tiempo. ¿no? Es, también es como esta palabra que viene desde la academia como ecología, viene otra palabra que se usa mucho para decir los recursos naturales, ¿no? En los pueblos indígenas no concebimos 
a la naturaleza como un recurso, como una mercancía, sino como un bien, como un bien común, como un bien colectivo, como un bien comunal. Entonces, eh, y todo esto, claramente antes de que se conociera la palabra ecología ¿no? para los pueblos. ¿no? Ahora, desde la academia, desde la institución, desde la ciencia, hablar de ecología, desde esta ecología capitalista, es hablar en nuestro caso, como allá en Sudáfrica, de todos los grandes proyectos de energía renovable que han llegado a salvar a los pueblos indígenas de México y al mundo, de este, del que era entonces el cambio climático, con una propuesta ecológica y verde de generación de energía, que pues eh, es energía usada para la industria principalmente. ¿no? Hay como algo, un ejemplo muy específico, hay un parque eh, de una empresa minera, o en un parque eólico de una empresa minera, entonces en el norte del país esta empresa está destruyendo cerros, tierras, pero como usa energía verde es una buena empresa, ¿no? es una empresa ecológica. Entonces es importante cómo eh, utilizamos y reivindicamos los conceptos eh, académicos, porque desde las cosmovisiones de los pueblos indígenas, de las luchas, de las resistencias, no podemos reproducir ese lenguaje que el capitalismo, que el patriarcado y que todos estos, eh, y que la colonización por sí misma, pues nos siguen imponiendo.